Hello friends, Jayma Mulney here, and today I'm gonna to get 13 pictures on this double page layout. You might be thinking, but that's not 13 pictures. Well, I have eight more photos over here. I've got a pocket plus page. I've printed some of them at three by four, some of them at four by six. So I've got two three by fours in here, actually just side by side. They are, I printed some of the three by fours together because I print them together on one four by six, but I cut them apart and just put them in there together and then I've got a flip flap so I'm going to show you at the end what I'll do with this blank space and how I attach the flip flap and uh, what I do with that blank space there as well but that's going to allow me to get lots more pictures on this layout this is uh, photos from when I did the Tough Mudder with my friends. And so all of these ones over here are like the during action shots. I was lucky that one of our friends came and wasn't participating. And so he came around and took a bunch of pictures, which is awesome because obviously we could have our cameras with us. Um, and then this side I have before, and then this side is the after. So it'll be before, after, and then all the in-between stuff in the middle. So that's how I decided to organize it. Um, and I already cut my title on the Cricut. I have a video showing how to create a title with text and add an offset um, in Cricut Design Space. So I will leave that link down below. And I made it look like the Tough Mudder logo there. Um, but I'm gonna do some fun treatments to this we're gonna have fun creating some mud on our page so um, I'm going to do like a little ink treatment and then this stamp set here which is the design elements stamp this is a new one and I knew when I saw this that I was gonna use this for this layout because doesn't this look like it could be like cracked mud you know like mud that's kind of starting to dry up and get that cracked look so I'm gonna add this to my inking treatment and um, I'm gonna be also using the Good Life Paper Collection. So you might not necessarily think of this for a mud run and using it with these bright colors, but what I've done was I've kind of uh, chosen these two right here. Um, there's also, like if you look at the paper sheet, it doesn't look like this seam will go at all with a mud run. Um, you know, it's more farming. But if you look at look past the sticker sheet and look just at the um, papers, then you know, don't look at the windmill. And this is still very neutral. You can cover that up. But um, I've seen some really amazing farming and windmill and all types of layouts created with this feature paper here. And then these ones, you know, there's really no theme at all. There's wood paneling, some dots, some gingham. These are all, I've already shown you all the papers here turned upside down. And um, so these could be used for a variety of things. I thought this kind of looked like mud. What do you think? That could kind of look like mud. And then this one is just like a really cool textural pattern, you know, designed to look like that, um, you know, aluminum or metal siding. And, but it's just a really cool textural element. I've got a lot of gray in my photos, um, you know, in my husband's shirt and just, I don't know, the kind of distressed look of the mud and everything going on with my photos. So I know that I'm gonna be using these two. I'm not sure I'll be using anything from the sticker sheet, maybe like the Better Together, Memories This Day, like some of the things could work. Um, but I am going to definitely use these. And then this is the mix-in paper packet. These are designed to go with the current paper collections. So these ones go, you know, really well with the good life. And then these will go more with the Christmas theme paper or, you know, some of them can overlap too. Here's the backs of all of those really, really fun patterns with, you know, really no, um, theme at all they just mix in with whatever you're working with and so i thought that this one would go well with these two so if i kind of stack them i was imagining i might kind of stack them like something like this it's a little bit too much neutral i want to add a little bit of color but i was thinking i would do like something like this and just have it at the bottom and a little bit at the top and then leave my in the middle light so I can do my inking treatment to look like the mud. Now let's see if we add like just a very thin, I wanna separate these patterns. And so I brought out some paprika, which is very unlike me. I'm not a big fan of paprika, 
but it goes with the red or the orange in the logo here. But um, I still don't think it's enough of a pop of color. My photos are so bright. I wanna add a little bit more of a pop of color. Let's try the rosy. This is a new color, it's so pretty. It's not quite bright enough to go with this. So I've got some wild berries, we could try that. And that matches my friend's shirt better and that brings in a nice pop of color. But then your eye just goes straight to her shirt all over here. And I don't, I love Lisa to death, but I don't want her to necessarily be the focus of this layout. So I don't think I want the pinks or purples. So let's try this. This is Journey. It is the color of the year, and I'm not sure if I want to try, let's try the dark side. I do like that because, so we've got my shirt, which is a lighter, kind of a lighter tone of this. We've got the headbands uh, on everybody here, even though it's not an exact match. We have the bright blue sky. Um, I think that this will blend in well enough and make all of the photos pop and bring in just that little bit of color that I want down here. Now I could turn it over to the light side. All of Coast of My Heart's papers have a true color on one side and a light color of that same, uh, a light shade of that same color on the back. I think I like the full strength. I Something about that, I just like it better. Let me try something else actually. If I bring this, if I still have these little stripes down here, but then what if I bring this up and have it be like, let's see. If I have it go not quite across and I have a big chunk of it here and I could have it kind of take up half, like so I'll have my stripe across here I'll have my stripes across here, and then this block will help to, I don't know, sort of mat some of the photos. And then this is still light enough that I can do my inking treatment back here. I think that's gonna work. And luckily I buy two of the mix-in papers. So I have two of these sheets. The mix-in packs only come with one of each paper. That They're all double-sided, but there's only one of each. So I always get two of the mix-ins just so I have two of each paper. So I think, I'm gonna need both. So then I'll have this one come kind of over like that. I think I'll do something like that. Okay, so now let's talk about the inking treatment I wanna do and how I arranged my photos. So I did it like this because I wanna keep the rule of, you know, a visual triangle, not a rule, but the guideline of the visual triangle in mind. So I'm gonna have kind of like an inking treatment and cluster here here and here and then that creates the triangle to draw your eye across the page and i've been playing with like offsetting my photos a little bit and being getting a little more playful i tend to just do like straight lines and maybe i'll end up doing that but i'll i might also kind of play with the angles on this and make it a little more playful as we go so let me go ahead and cut some papers and then we'll come back and i'll show you the inking techniques Okay, this is where I ended up. I have about an inch by 12 on this bottom piece that's showing more. And by the way, this is French vanilla, but I'm using a white background just because I didn't like the French vanilla background. I wanted it to be brighter. So I think it blends well enough, um, but this is an inch by 12. And then I'm gonna have just a teeny tiny bit of the journey sticking out and then maybe about a quarter of an inch of this one sticking out. So all said and done, it will be about an inch and a half tall. So kind of like this. And then I have the strips a little skinnier up here so it's not as visually weighted. I might even cut this down just a tiny bit more. And then I've got this one cut to six inches by there's nine inches showing but i cut it to 10 inches because i wasn't sure how long i would want it i didn't like it going all the way up i like having just that little bit of white space right here and have it kind of cornered off like that and then instead of having these wonky i decided just to kind of have them like this so they're not totally straight they're overlapped a little bit a little bit playful but not wonky this piece over here is eight inches wide by 
10 inches. Again, you could get away with nine inches. I have a little bit uh, overlapping or under this piece right here. Okay, so what I tried for the inking was the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink and Toffee. Now, Toffee is the color that's in this paper pack, so I tried that first. But if you look at this, this is actually the toffee and it looks nothing like that. So some of the inks, because these are not water reactive inks, the close to my heart inks, they're not water reactive. So some of them have a, a reaction you don't necessarily want with water. And that's kind of what happened with this. It changed the color and then you can see the edges are still kind of that toffee color, but the rest of it isn't. It almost turned a little bit pinky. This is the Distress Oxide ink, which is designed to react with water. And so, um, um, I think that actually matches the toffee perfectly. So I'm gonna be using that for our little inking treatment. So it's a good idea to test out uh, inking treatments before you do it to see how it dries because everything dries back lighter, but also just to make sure that you get the look that you want. This has more of a splattering and muddy look than this too. So I'll show you how I got that look. So now that I have everything laid out exactly, we're gonna take it apart. I'm gonna mark where my photos are so I know where I'm gonna do my inking. So we're gonna go kind of like this and like this. because I want my inking to kind of radiate out from here. And then I want it to be kind of like this and then like that. So over here, I know that I wanna have it here. So I'm going to make my mark here. And then I think I'm gonna have it come out from the paper. I don't want it to overlap the white and the paper cause it's gonna give a little bit different look. So I'm gonna make my mark under the paper here. So wherever I have a basically a corner mark, I know that's where my inking is going to be coming out from. I'm gonna do these one at a time and I'm going to put my all-purpose mat down because that will give me a surface to put my ink and pick it up from and uh, not get my surface dirty. This has a silicone backing so it doesn't slide around. It's really nice. And then this, you can wipe anything off of this. It's so great. So I'm just gonna use that basically as my palette. So I'll just get lots of ink down there and then we're gonna spray it with, you can just use a regular spray bottle. I'm using the Distress Sprayer, but anything uh, that will just kind of get it wet will do. And then I have a plastic bag that is left over from some embellishments. I recently reorganized my embellishments. If you saw that video, you know what I'm talking about. I had a whole bunch left over. So I am just gonna use this packaging technique to pick up some of this ink. You don't need a, a bag this big, and you don't even need a bag. You can um, use anything that's plastic. And then I'm just going to come over here, kind of spread it around. And I'm dabbing and rubbing because I want a bunch of different textures. Now, I didn't put any gesso or anything on this. I'm working just on straight white daisy paper. So it's not a mixed media paper. So it doesn't have like an ability to, you know, move your uh, inks afterwards a little bit. It just really soaks in right away. It's a very thirsty paper and it just soaks up that ink right away. But if you do a whole bunch kind of you know, you can get that layered look with these Distress Oxides. So I think this is gonna be really fun. See how it's giving that like dirty, muddy look already. You've got that splatter. We had lots of that in the event. So I'll set this one aside to dry. And then we'll bring this one over and we'll do the exact same thing. I know that this Tough Mudder Mud Run is not for everybody, but oh my gosh, it had it was so much fun. I'm not a runner, I don't like to race, um, so I didn't run the whole event. I ran, you know, just very little parts of it. I was scared to do it, I had no idea what I would think, but I had the best time, you guys. The obstacles were so fun. Um, we, you know, going into it, knowing that you're going to get muddy, 
and just planning for it and wearing old clothes. Um, just, ha just having fun with it. It was so much fun and I can't wait for next year. I'm definitely going to do this again. So see how that dried back and it's going to dry back lighter. Okay, the same thing here. This is looking so fun. So you can do this with farm layouts. If you got muddy on the farm or maybe you've got some pigs in your picture, that would be fun to do this kind of layout. And of course, this Good Life paper lends itself well to a farm kind of layout. So even if you go with the farm theme, this is going to work out really well. So look at how that dried back. So you can see the comparison. It's already, it's not dry all the way, but you can see how it dries back a lot. So I'm going to do just another little layer here. Really want that splattered effect. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up just with a paper towel. Okay, so I've got my photos back in place. I love how this looks, you guys. I love it. Um, I decided I'm not going to put ink behind here. I'm just going to let that stand out. I might put some embellishments around there, but I really like having these three points here. So we're going to go ahead and glue everything down. So I'm going to glue this piece down first um, because that's going to go underneath here. And then I will glue this one, but I'm going to put the adhesive just on the very bottom so that I can then slide this under so that we have just that like eighth of an inch sticking out. And then actually I'll put this one under first and then this can slide under and just show like an eighth of an inch. So I'll have this one at the one and a half mark. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to speed up for you guys now and I want to point out that I'm using close to my heart dot runner. The nice thing about this tape runner is that it is removable until it's not. <laughs> it's like temporarily removable and then it's permanent and that is going to be important in just a moment because I'm going to have to um, remove some pieces that I already put down and I should actually not even be putting these pieces down yet because I didn't do the stamping over the inking yet so I'm going to have to mask off a little bit and come back to that but I do want to show you how I'm putting these layers on so I put the adhesive like I mentioned, just at the bottom of that uh, bottom strip. And then I am um, adhering the uh, stripe one and tucking it under. And then I will add this journey one and tuck that under. I want to point out that I'm using my Versamat, which is that black mat underneath my paper to help me line things up. It really helps, especially with these skinny strips. So I know I go one and a half on one side and line it up at the one and a half on the other. So we've got those stripes in place on the bottom and this is where I realized, oops, I forgot to add this stamp on here. So I'm first gonna test it. I'm testing the Distress Oxide and the uh, Close to My Heart Exclusive inks to see which one I wanted to stamp on top. Since we're just stamping and not adding water and inking, um, I figured, you know, I could use the uh, exclusive dye ink if I wanted to. Uh, but once I tested it, I realized that it, it really doesn't matter which one I use. They both show up. And the Distress Oxide probably would not soak into the paper quite as much and in the end show up a little better and it wouldn't lighten up quite as much. So I decided to go with that one. And so I'm using some scrap paper to cover up the right side so that I get the ink just on. On the inking. It proved a little bit difficult because there was a gap between the scrap paper and the layered papers on the bottom and then my inking, but this is a very forgiving stamp. So if you overlap it a bunch, um, it's going to be okay. And so I just kind of like stamped it again and used just like one corner of the stamp to get it exactly where I wanted it. And I didn't want to cover the entire inked background I just wanted a little bit so like on this one I'm just doing one stamp and on the other one I'll just do 
one stamp down so it's not covering that entire splattered area. I use this bigger, faster, stronger stamp and I did some fun stamping right onto my background. And then I also cut out some little embellishments. So the water bottle and the trophy are from that stamp set. And then I forgot to show you the beach party scrapbooking stamp set. That is where the sunglasses came from. I originally stamped those in Journey. I added a little bit of black detail because I colored in the sunglasses with a black marker and then added a little black detail to all the other embellishments as well so they would kind of match i thought that the journey was too much of a pop of color i really wanted that to be subtle so i stamped them again in charcoal and that was much better this is the nailed it stamp set it has coordinating dies but i'm just using some stamps i was super excited about this stamp set because my husband does a bunch of woodworking but i'm just using the before and after stamps today because of course i'm doing the before and after pictures it worked out absolutely perfectly i love this little touch so since i haven't used these stamps and they're a little bit solid i seasoned them well on my hand and then i'm doing a couple of practice runs this is also going to allow me to decide where i want to stamp them i can hold my scrap paper up in the top there to decide where i want to place those that before i decided to kind of tuck it up against the patterned paper and a little tip when you're using two stamps and you have one block you can put one stamp on each side of the block and then just flip it over so this is where it came in really handy that i used the repositionable tape runner i decided to do some stamping behind my title i didn't want the inking because i wanted just those three points but i decided just to add the stamping behind the title and i thought i would just do a couple like one in the top left and one in the bottom right and so i'm going to be doing that here and put my title back in place see how that looks i love it but I want more and I am just going to keep going and going with this technique. So I'm actually going to end up filling that whole spot and I love the interest that it adds and that texture behind there, but it doesn't add as much visual weight as the distress oxide ink smushing technique that we did. You really can do this ink smushing technique with any layout. It doesn't have to be farm. It doesn't have to be mud. Use a bright color and add it around your photos for any theme. It's so flexible and so fun. I really hope you try it. Now let's take a close up look at all of this goodness before I show you the insert. I added just a little bit of ink blending behind the before and after so that they just had a little bit of color behind them, helped them stand out. You can see my stamping a little bit better. All of the stamping on the background was in charcoal. All right, let's look at this pocket plus insert. I love these pocket plus pages and the flip flaps. I'm going to have everything linked down in the description for you. If you need this in your life, I used the all in stamp because I thought that worked perfectly because I was all in on this race and all in on this water. This right here was an ice bath. It was so cold. We had to go underneath those two little like beams that go across. Oh my gosh, that was the worst one. It was so, so freezing. Okay, I wanna point out this center one, I did the same technique, and that is a four by six piece of white cardstock that I adhered the three by four photos to and then did the little inking technique. And then this flip flap has another four by six insert, which is where I'll add my journaling and then just decorated it to mimic my layout. It was super, super easy. Love how it turned out. And look at how easy these flip flaps are to, to adhere. It's just as easy as that. I'm gonna burnish it a little bit. These come in three by four, four by four, four by six, even a big eight by 12, which is great for adding memorabilia. They're awesome and I very highly recommend them. And then this insert will just go in my album. There's, it's got the holes and it just lays in your album along with your layouts. It's super, super awesome. If you wanna see more ideas of layouts using the Pocket Plus and flip flaps, then check out the video that's on screen right now. I use these all the time to add extra photos to my layouts and hope you love them too. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.